Come once again to discuss things. Hello, boils and ghouls, it's your old pal Sight Part 2 here with my good friend the real maggot. <laughs> For another episode of Ghouly Gentlemen. Horror Month. Yep, we're still doing that. Uh, hi, everyone. Hope, hope everyone's doing well as we enter another horror fan film review for this next installment of Geeky Gentlemen Horror Month. Uh, Manos picked our horror fan film. What are we reviewing today? This week, we are doing a Scream fan film called Ghostface. Yeah, I mean, it's it's spelled out exactly like that and everything. Ghostface. Yeah. A-A-A-A-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H. Yep. Yep. I'm very uh, lucky that I didn't hit the wrong button on the sound machine uh, that I have. Otherwise, it could have been like this. Ghostface! <laughs> Geeky gentlemen in the morning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so Ghostface. It's Ian and the Manos coming at you. <laughs> uh, Ghostface. All right, so here's the interesting thing. Um, never watched the Scream film. Really? Uh, yeah. Like, so what it is is I am a child of the 90s. Um, yeah. I, I grew up in the 90s when Scream was getting popular, but you know what it was also popular in the 90s because of Scream? Uh, weed? Scary movie. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, like, I grew up with... Like, I was allowed to watch Scary Movie, because that was rated PG-13, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and they're comedies. I, yeah, and I wasn't allowed to watch Scream, because that was rated R. And so, like, Scary Movie... You know, it just parried, parodied the shit out of Scream, which in and of itself is is kind of a parody. From like, I don't, I haven't watched Scream, but I kind of get it. You know, I, I understand what it's trying to do. Yeah. Um, so, like, in and of itself is kind of a parody of horror, and so it's just I always had such a detachment from it that I rarely had much interest in watching uh, Scream. So this makes a an interesting fan film for me to review. All right. Well, that. That is understandable. I could see where the scary movie franchise could cool you off on the idea of seeing Scream. Um, I was really waiting for the the trademark scene for Ghostface to say, What the? Yeah, I could definitely <laughs> understand now. Um, <laughs> I like the Scream movies, uh, although I don't love them, um, partly because I do... It's not fair, but I do kind of blame them for the ironic detachment horror movies that had come across over the last, oh, I don't know, maybe a, a decade and a half afterwards, uh, which got old really super fucking quick uh, for me. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of blame them for that. And it's, I don't know, that's not fair, but I do. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so... As someone who does like the Scream movies, though, how do you think this does at capturing the mood and the atmosphere of them? I think it does a pretty decent job. Uh, I think it's fairly well shot, and it's obviously... Uh, the way it's done is pretty much in line with some of the attitudes. Uh, the fact that you see as props uh, DVD box covers of the Stab movies, which is a 
awesome touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they look really authentic, too, which is pretty funny. And they even have um, subtitles. Yeah, which, yeah. Which is great. I was, like, trying to remember, like, did they have subtitles or, uh, in the original series? I can't remember. So... Uh, yeah, I, I think it does a pretty decent job falling in line with it in the fact that uh, this ghost face is trying to uh, create a reboot and he feels like the best way to do it is to uh, kill the original characters. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's it's obviously, to me, done by uh, like a fan who really kind of appreciates the work and in spirit tries to capture that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I thought that was pretty cool. I love the... The commentary on horror movies, which is, of course, what Scream is all about. Yeah. Um, he's just really on point with all of that. And it's it's kind of funny to see those uh, those summations of the tropes of horror and everything kind of work in there. And so he's like, you know, victim A, victim B, like that whole speech is really great. His whole, doesn't it, isn't it obvious with the grungier mask and the new robes? Like... That I, is just really funny to me. Um, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed the the very self-aware. It's almost a fourth wall break, but it works in context too, which makes it even more impressive. Um, it's just, I don't know, it is really fun to see how that all kind of comes together. That is pretty much in line with uh, the humor and self-referential um, dialogue and, and jokes that uh, Craven would do in the, the original series because uh, you know he's pretty much commenting on horror films up until that point mm-hmm. and well horror films have changed a little bit since then so yeah i mean it does feel like he's throwing shade at the hollow halloween remakes yeah uh, yeah where... he's got the grungier mask and yeah that's a good point mm-hmm. that's the first thing i thought of when he, he mentioned that mm-hmm. well I, I hadn't thought of that i just thought you know the general sense of the hollywood reboot machine I like the line about the only way you can reboot a franchise is by killing off the original. And yeah, that's kind of true, especially in horror. Um, like, I, I can't remember which Nightmare movie it was and which actor and all this stuff, but I remember hearing an interview with one of the actors that played um, one of the characters in, in the Nightmare films. And he's like talking about, you see, they forgot to kill me by the end of that movie. So I got to survive into the next movie, but I told all my friends and family, do not get to the theater late. Do not stand in the line for popcorn because I'm going to die in the first five minutes. Um, yeah. And so that is that is really on point with the way we do horror. And like a lot of people get really upset with that in horror films. Um, I think in particular about like Alien 3, um, which oh, is certainly yeah. not a good movie, but like one of the people's big complaints with that is it kind of shits on the characters that people really like from Aliens and, you know, just kills them off right away. And like, yeah, you can make an argument, oh, it's doing this in a horrific manner and it's having this effect on Ripley's character and someone's going to be typing in the comments about how good a movie Alien 3 is and they're wrong, but... um. <laughs> That was one of my problems with the original... Uh, well, the original Alien 3. Uh, that was my, one of my problems with Alien 3 is like, gee, it just... It makes watching Aliens a more hollow experience. Mm-hmm. Like, God, you'd like root for uh, like Ripley and the kid uh, to get through all that shit. And then, oh, uh, great. You know, we jump right to their autopsy in the next... Uh, movie it's kind of depressing like it's definitely more depressing to go back and watch that film mm-hmm. um i mean alien 3 is well made uh because it's made by david fincher but boy it's like it feels like an unnecessary bummer mm-hmm. yeah um so like, like it's just interesting the way that it's commenting on the the reboot aspect of the horror movie which i don't know if uh like, from what I remember, or from what I understand about Scream, the Scream franchise is more talking about the franchising of, of horror. Um, in particular, Wes Craven kind of commenting on basically what happened to Freddy Krueger. Um, oh, yeah. How he kind of became an icon and, and all that stuff. Uh, so I find that aspect of this really interesting. I also really, really like the way that this plays with the idea of... Um, 
serial killer worship because I think that plays into uh, a lot of the the iconization <laughs> that's yeah. a word of the horror character um, yeah. and so it plays in the universe as serial killer worship mm-hmm. and that's a real problem in today really uh-huh. <laughs> yeah so just really really cool ideas on uh, on display here um I don't know why. Why don't you take us somewhere for a minute? Okay, uh, let's. Uh, I don't know. I suppose uh, I do like the the whole setup where we got the. Uh, we do have like the introduction scene with with the, the post credit kill, <laughs> and of course we main to our, our main wow. bit. I can't remember their names. I think it's Lisa and Lenny. I think are mm-hmm. the victims. Okay, so we get to spend most of the time with um, uh, Lisa. She's uh, obviously, you know, working on, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, like, she has some sort of connection to the original characters, which is why he's trying to seek them out and kill them. I really kind of dug the fact that this feels like part of a story mm-hmm. uh, within that universe that someone wants to continue on. Uh, now, granted, I haven't seen Scream 4, which came out, like, year, just a few years ago. And uh, I, so I don't know what Craven did with that film. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't even know the plot of it. Uh, but I assume this kind of plays in similar territory with the idea of something sitting around for a generation having an effect, uh, a generation of fans, and seeing how they kind of like reinterpret. And that's kind of what, you know, this, you know, Ghostface is trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um the way that like he is so aware of himself and and is critiquing the other characters uh, or the other the other ghosts as they call them and I like that it's kind of become a shorthand. Yeah. Um, I, the way that he's critiquing them and is so self aware really does fit in with the whole trope of the everyone knows which direction a horror movie takes and so we always like. You know, he goes, like, I'm not going to explain my plan like a Bond villain. I'm just going to go kill these people. <laughs> one of the jokes, one of the recurring jokes of the Scream movies is that uh, people were aware of the tropes in horror films. And then when they were put in that situation, they kind of just did the tropes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they followed right into the, you know, the, the rules. Um, so that... Uh, That'd be interesting to see if um, this killer would go, you know, uh, into directions that, you know, obviously <laughs> are untrope worthy. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's the funny thing about him is like he goes, I'm not going to explain my plan. And then he just sits there and monologues, ex- basically explaining his plan. Yeah, the, um, the film is basically two monologues. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that was really cool. Um Did did you have a preference for scene? Like, did you think one scene was better than the other as far as the monologues went? Um, I guess the stuff with Lisa was better. Yeah? Yeah. I I think I'd agree with you. I like a lot of the stuff with, with Lenny, I guess his name is, but it does feel like it's a little too wordy. Um, mm-hmm. And you, you kind of get lost a little, where, a little ways in there. It's, like, really hard to to replicate what he's saying, even though you kind of get it based yeah. on the context. So it just, it just feels a little, um, a little messy in that regard, I guess. I believe that both speeches do get a little overly wordy, uh, frankly, where I do kind of drift in and out a couple of times while watching. Um, I would come back to him, but I would also like take mental breaks. Mm. Of like, you know, we need some Count Chocula, ser- Count Chocula cereal this week. Let me get yeah. some. Oh, he's still talking. Let me get back into it. Um, yeah, I mean, we're getting a lot of like, you know, the wordy killer. The um, I, I kept thinking about, you know, some of the stuff that uh, Heath Ledger was doing in Dark Knight. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. The difference is like, you know, his speeches were a bit shorter and a little bit more precise. You know, they were really well planned, thought out. Uh, bits of dialogue and course like Ledger is Ledger um, so it didn't quite get there to to that level obviously mm-hmm. um, I don't know if it felt like 
that was an inspiration or not. But uh, that's what I was reminded of. I mean, he does have a very distinct voice for uh, Ghostface, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously like a modulator or something put on it, but it works really well. Mm -hmm. That uh, voice was really effective. Um, I think that's the writer-director mm -hmm. uh, doing the voice, I think. Um, he's a really good voice uh, for that kind of character. It, was too, uh, it really did sell it. Like if he was um, a less interesting voice actor... Oh, uh, that might have been a been a, a bit of a chore to get through. Yeah, and I think the the reason he's able to sell it so well is because you feel like I, I really do feel that like he's thought this through. He spent a lot of time on this script, mm -hmm. um, and he's just kind of got it down. And so it's it's kind of the situation where probably no one else could do the voice as well as him at that point. Or, yeah. or give that character this this particular ghost face the voice that that he's given him. Yeah, that sometimes happens to writer directors where it's like, I can't find anybody who can do this the way I can do it. I might as well fucking do it. Mm -hmm. uh, like Harold, that's why Harold Ramis played Egon in mm. uh, Ghostbusters because uh, he wasn't going to play that character, uh, but they couldn't find anybody to do Egon the way he did it. Um, same thing with, um, Edna Mole in, uh, Incredibles. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you know, Brad Bird, like, had this voice, like, okay, I want you to sound this. And, like, you know, he had, he would have actors, like, you know, auditions, like, oh, okay, you know what? All right, oh, fuck it, I'll do it. Because, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is the way she sounds. And, like, nobody can do it, so I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, so that's that's just cool the way that comes off um it, even if the language is maybe a little too uh a little too um packed it does come off uh, really well in context and i i want to hear a monologue more i kind of hope that this turns into something maybe i don't know it's it it probably can't because the way they set it up you would need the original actors to, yes <laughs> to reprise their roles, and that's probably not going to happen. But uh, it's a it's a really strong pitch for a, a scream sequel slash reboot that's just continues the continuity, but knowingly uh, relaunches itself in another direction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, what else? Um, no, we've been pretty positive. Let's let's go ahead and transition here and talk about some of the negatives. Um, sure. I don't like the actress playing Lisa. Um, for such a s short fan film and for her to have such, you know, really minimal dialogue, I feel like you could probably have found someone a bit better to play that character. Um it's not so much her dialogue that's the problem. It's a lot of the, the, the physical action. I just straight don't buy her. Um, like when he pops around the corner and knocks her out from the uh, outside of the door. And she's just kind of like... You can tell she doesn't drop on the floor. You can tell she's kind of quickly laying on the floor. Um, and she just doesn't look like she's dazed or confused or anything. She just... Kind of looks like, okay, now I'm going to act like I'm falling asleep. Um, I thought the that her performance was, was pretty weak. I thought both uh, her and Lenny were both weak. Mm -hmm. That was actually my biggest problem with the film. Um, like, particularly Lenny, I thought, I thought Lisa was slightly better. Uh, maybe it's because she actually had dialogue and scenes that interacted more uh where lenny was just like are you asleep are you did he put you in a trance is he, was lenny on drugs or something like lenny was just really into this monologue about about uh, like he's Maine, not victim be. like they're both uh they're both like not acting like people mm -hmm. uh, in these scenes uh like they're i guess they're both supposed to be really scared and stunned but I don't believe that. They just seem like they're in a trance. Like, if there was one line about him giving them drugs, uh, like, okay, all right, I'll believe that. Uh, maybe that would have been a good way to cover their acting. But, um, boy, it's just like he was, like, Lenny guy was just, like, just staring at the camera, like, hey, um, 
Zat. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like to. I don't like to rip on people uh, acting in the particular fan films because um, they're there because they love it, and uh, I so I tend to resist doing that. But yeah, they were both really like distractingly bland non performances that it did take me out of the film a little bit. Yeah, that's the problem I definitely had with them. Um, and normally I too tend to think my, my philosophy with actors in fan films tends to be you get who you can get and they, and you hope they can do the I, best job possible, but like exactly. Yes. With these being from what I can tell, completely original characters for the sake of this fan film, I just can't help but feel like there was a way to get better people in here for acting. And and I don't know anything about the behind the scenes of putting this together. And so there's probably a reason that they use the people they use. That's probably all they could manage. But yeah. I will say I think they are the weakest part of the, the project. I'd say so. And Lenny doesn't even say anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a bad performance. Yeah. Because he's just... Well, I mean... It, it it's a scene that requires you to act with your with your body and with your face and with your eyes and he's just like staring at the at the camera mm-hmm. um to the point like is this the same like reaction shot they're just using over and over again it's um i was on i mean i don't know it's just it's one of those things like i'm sure they're either like friends or maybe they contributed to the film or they were uh, co-producers or co-writers or they were just actors he knew but uh yeah it was it was a little it was a little tough mm-hmm. i will say though um for the lenny scene uh even though i don't like the performance very much I, the the camera angles and stuff i i i feel like they chose really good shots for oh, yes, of his yes. performance like you know, just the human body is kind of disgusting. Like, you ever watch the intro to Dexter? And no. it's just like... Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's like super close-ups of really ordinary tasks, and that makes it look so creepy and weird. Um, so just like, yeah, like the guy's not doing a great job selling the performance, but just that super close-up on his fucking eyes is just... <laughs> it's really creepy and weird, and, and so it makes it feel more uneasy than than the actor necessarily sells it as. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the camera work and the direction do, I think, like, the best performances um, out, of, out of this. Like, because, you know, Ghostface is, like, you know, completely covered, in, you know, head to toe. You only get a vocal performance, really, um, mm-hmm. which is really good. I will, I will say, for the physical actor doing Ghostface, um, you know, he does a lot of the the kind of typical stuff, but he does it well, like the head tilts and the the overly dramatic head tilts that, that you tend to see for masked actors. I feel like he sells it really well. I would agree with that. I think uh, the physical performance, I think there were two different actors, one doing the physical body and the one doing the vocal act. That's the impression I got. Yeah, um, it was really well put together. Um, mm-hmm. I I'm rather just... like... I rather like this this ghost face actually. Um, I thought it was interesting that he didn't kill Lisa at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because um, I don't know. It's just like okay, get to the kill, get to the kill, and like he didn't kill her. It's like oh, that's that was actually interesting. That was actually pretty uh, uh, suspenseful in that in that regard. Because well, I don't know it's... when you when you expect someone to I don't know when you expect the same thing you've seen in every everything. Oh, uh, it does get less suspenseful. Uh, mm-hmm. But now it's like, oh, I don't know. Like, will he kill her? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I thought all that shit was really um, was really effective. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because you kind of realize that Lenny fucked up because, like, this ghost face is apparently kind of got to keep his word. Um, it, it looks like Lisa is safe at the end of this. Um, so I don't know. That's, that's kind of interesting. And, and, and what's more so is not only is she safe, but like he kind of taunts that he, he kind of manipulated the entire situation with her. Um, when he, when she realizes that she'd just been talking to him the whole time on her phone, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I thought I told you to stay off your fucking phone. It sounds like Willem Dafoe doing Ghostface. <laughs> um, back to formula. Um, yeah, that's what it is kind of scratching the back of my head. And hey, if you can sound like Willem Dafoe, that's pretty fucking badass. How come Willem Dafoe hasn't been the monster in a horror movie? Um, he was, uh, we, we just talked about this um, uh, Shadow of the Vampire. He plays Max Shrek. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, he plays the vampire in it. <laughs> um so yeah i don't know stuff like stuff like that it's it's just worth thinking about the the way that the they've written ghost face here is kind of cool mm-hmm. um hmm what else can we talk about with this one because we need yeah. to fill like about four more minutes give or take four more minutes oh no oh, oh no um <laughs> All right, so the the scene where Lisa's quote unquote alone in her house and Ghostface is just walking around, um, maybe this is just me, but and maybe this is kind of to the point of uh, of these these uh, horror film tropes. I just have so much trouble believing that someone wouldn't realize someone else is in their house like that. Like I. I I kind of start to lose suspension of disbelief in scenes like that. Uh, yeah, she was a little, a little too unaware of him. He was a little too close mm-hmm. for her not to realize it. Um, especially after fuck man, like, um, she hears the, uh, the little sound machine in the next room. She goes, check on it. It's been turned on. And she checks on like, uh, the files and they've been all messed up. Why isn't she getting the fuck out of there? Like, right? why is, that's one of the things that so dry, drives me nuts when I watched it. Like, with her, like, acting like she's in a trance is like, are, are you okay? Like, if I saw that shit, I'd be out the fucking door. Uh, mm-hmm. Or at least, like, really concerned. Like, she, she acts like she doesn't give a shit. Like, oh, great. Apparently, mm-hmm. somebody messed up these files while I'm here alone at night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe you could argue that there was a drug involved with her because, like, when she gets home, the first thing she does is take a drink of whiskey. Um, so you could maybe make that argument for it, but I don't think that's the case on its own. I don't think the film presents that to us. I don't know. Um, she took she she took a quaalude with it. I'd believe it, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know stuff like that. I I tend to lose a bit of suspension of disbelief and and. I mean, it is creepy to see him kind of, like, walking through the background and stuff. And that's, of course... It is. That's that's the most famous scene from Scream, right? Is, uh, you know, like, oh, do you watch scary movies? Oh, the people in those are so stupid. The killer's in the house and they don't get the fuck out. And then, yeah. Um, Yeah. Like, it's the most most famous scene from Scream. Um, And also, like, you know, I was thinking about, uh, when I was watching that, I was watching The Strangers, which, you know, came after Scream. And, you know, some of the creepiest stuff in The Strangers is the fact that they're just, like, creeping around this couple's house while they don't know they're there. Uh, There's some really creepy moments when they're doing that. Um, Is The Strangers the one where, like, the people are going door to door, just kind of, like, knocking and, and, like asking if someone's home that yeah. doesn't live there yeah yeah i remember yeah. the director talking about that and saying that was a real thing he experienced and it's fucking horrified him mm-hmm. um yeah like uh, so I, goes... yeah. yeah i like the strangers a lot Uh-oh. okay so Ghostface like walking around the house is like it's it's kind of creepy though, especially with that white mask and the all black cloak you can do some cool uh shots with it and so I, I certainly understand the temptation, but it is a little, it's just a little uh, unbelievable, the the human reaction to it. And, and yeah, it's part of the whole people fall into the tropes thing, but at the same time, I, I feel there is a better way to balance that. I would say so. Uh, I would definitely say so. Um, yeah, at least it just acted a little bit more... Uh, like a regular person, <laughs> that would probably been like like definitely change on that. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't know, or if she had just, um, if she had just had a need, she was waiting for her friend, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So, you know, there is that, like, she's waiting for a friend. But, I mean, like, fuck, there might be a killer <laughs> coming mm-hmm. into the house. Oh, uh, yeah, it's my like, friend. Yeah, it's like the, sure, it's the sound from the other room. Like, if it had been something natural, like a, I don't know, like, fucking machine that makes sound effects or whatever. Just uh-huh. who knows who who might have one of those in their house. Um like if it, if it had been something more natural than like that then that'd be one thing but the fact that it's like clearly placed there and turned on is is what makes it just kind of and eh. but i don't want to i don't want to nitpick it too much just something that i i tend to think about when i was watching this um yeah yeah all right well then why don't we go ahead and move on to ratings yes all right uh i'm going to give this 3.5 out of 5 stab sequels. <laughs> I am going to give it... Uh, uh, I'm going to probably give it maybe 3 out of 5 what's up? <laughs> Damn it, that's a good one. All right. Well, uh, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Next time, we'll be talking about Never Hike Alone, a Friday the 13th fan film. Ah, Um, finally we've hit that one. Let's do it! Yep, let's do it. Uh, So that should be fun, everyone. Uh, Thanks for joining us, though. Until next time, I'm the philosopher! And I'm the realist! And we are your ghouly gentlemen, and we will be discussing things from beyond the